Hello, and welcome to another edition of Sun Dragon Tips and Tricks. I'm Rebecca. I'm the owner of Sun Dragon Art and Fiber in downtown Brevard, North Carolina. Monday, my house, here we go. So we're doing a sock knit along in June, this month of June that we're in. Hope you find these videos anytime. We have picked out three different patterns and one of them is the Rose City Rollers. I finished one of my socks. One of the fun things about the Rose City Rollers um, by, hang on, by Mara Catherine Briner. Um, I believe it's a, a free pattern. Definitely go get the pattern. This is not meant by any way, shape or form to replace the pattern because there are multiple sizes and we may not be talking about uh, exact stitch counts except in certain parts. This is to help you out with different parts of this pattern. So one of the things I like about this pattern is it has a little cuff here. It's really just knitting for about an inch and a half to start it. I've already made a video on how to start these on double points. That was this. And today we're going to do the heel. Now I have a video with a whiteboard breaking down the basics of a generic cuff down with a traditional heel with a flap and all those three parts that we're gonna talk about in a series of videos I'm filming today. So to understand what's going on, I really recommend going and watching that video because I've color coded it, I've done all kinds of things to understand the pieces of this. Now we're gonna look at it in action as we build this heel. So the first thing we're going to do is this flap, the heel flap, that'll be this video. And then I will do a video on the turn, which makes the bottom of your heel. And then I will do a video on filling in the gaps between the flap and the turn here and the rest of your stitches that you have on other needles up here. So we'll take a look at that as we go. Like I said, I'm gonna do three different videos. So we break it into bite-sized chunks this is not necessarily going to be a, I don't need a pattern, I can just follow her instructions. Because I really feel like the patterns are very valuable and the people who've written them have put a lot of work into them. These videos are just meant to help you process and understand that pattern. So let's get to it. All right, as I mentioned, these videos can also be super helpful for any sock that has the heel flap, a heel turn, this rounded part in here, and a gusset, which will be that diagonal part in there. This video is on the first part of making this three-part heel. I often feel like the heel can be one of the more complicated parts of socks, but take it a piece at a time and it will be okay. So this is written, the Rose City Rollers is written for double points. Here I have my double points. The same thing can function if you have it on magic loop or two circular needles. To some extent, even nine inch circulars, which do the small circumference on one needle. We have, I have my little stitch markers, my socks marks in here, marking one, needle one has one, one little uh, bead on it. Needle two has two, and then three, and then four. So a traditional heel will use, even the, the ones that aren't traditional, a heel will use half of your stitches, which will be two of our needles here, needles one and two. We will be ignoring needles three and four for a while. They're just going to hang out over there. We're going to be, we've been knitting in a circle up till now. And like I said, with Rose City Rollers, that means a, just a small cuff. If you're doing a traditional sock, you may have a longer cuff here. But we're only going to use half the stitches. And instead of knitting in a circle right now, we are going to be knitting flat because we are going to be making a flap. We're literally going to be making a rectangle off of this side. And actually how Rose City Rollers is written is needles one and two are the ones that are going to be hanging out in needles three and four. And some, on some level, it doesn't necessarily matter. But let me get over to, I'm going to knit across these two needles, and then I'm going to combine needles three and four 
onto one needle so it's all easier to work. So here I go. All right, I've just finished my second needle. Needles three and four, this is my new empty needle here. I'm going to combine the stitches from three and four onto one needle. And I'm gonna do that by working row one. Now again, this is a very traditional heel flap. I'm gonna both do the first set of instructions and I'm probably gonna take these stitch markers off while I do it and I'm going to knit them onto one needle. So again, different sizes of this pattern will have different numbers of stitches right now. So I'm not gonna talk stitch numbers per se on this part, but row one is slip one, knit one all the way across. So slipping involves putting your needle in, try to keep this out of the way. When you slip, unless it tells you to do otherwise, you're gonna slip things purl wise, which essentially it, it means putting your needle in like you're going to purl, this is if you're gonna knit, it will twist it. We don't want twisted stitches here. And it really just means sticking your needle straight in. So slip one, gonna take this off for now. And then knit one, let me find my yarn here. And I'm gonna do that across this needle. Slip one, knit one. Try to keep my thumbs out of the way so you can see. Slip one, knit one, slip one, knit one. This is just an even number of stitches. So your stitch count, as long as you have an even number of stitches, this should work. All right, this empty one I'm gonna put down for the moment because I wanna have both of these needles onto one now. I just knit one, so I'll start this needle off by slipping one, knitting one. all the way across. If this works out correctly, you're gonna end with a knit one. There we go. I am now on three needles. Half the stitches are on one needle here, and this is the only needle I'm working with. The other two are just stitch holders. The flap, since we're not knitting in a circle anymore, we're actually going to turn around and go back. So I'm gonna turn around, keep the needle the yarn's attached to in my left hand. That wasn't the case when we were knitting in a circle. And we're gonna follow the instructions for row two. Slip the first stitch, again, slip it purlwise, and just purl across everything else. On this, on the wrong side facing us, and you can tell it's the wrong side by all these bumps, we're just gonna purl across, only slipping that first stitch. I'll meet you on the other side. All right, there we go. I have purled across. Again, these two needles are just stitch holders for a, quite a while now because I'm going to, this was in this hand, now I'm gonna turn around, take my empty needle, and I'm going to go across. We have a right side and wrong side now. Row three on this says to slip one and knit one till the end of the row. Again, it's exactly what we did on row one for this sock, slip one, knit one. If you ever lose track of where you are, you can look down and say, did I just knit one? Is, is this loop attached to my yarn? That means I just knit one, it's time to slip one. When I slip one, if I look down, I'm gonna see that here is my knit stitch and there's my slip stitch, so it's time to knit one. So if you ever lose track, look down and say, on your right needle and say, is my yarn attached to my end stitch? That means I just knit one. If it's attached to the next stitch in and there's a stitch that the yarn is not attached to, that means I just slipped one. 
and it, it's slip one, knit one, all the way across. If this works out, you should end, again, since I'm talking to y'all, I'm like, wait, where am I? The yarn's attached to my end stitch. That means it's time to slip. Knit, slip, knit. You should end with a knit stitch. If you don't end with a knit stitch, something went wrong and tink out or figure out how to back, get back to figure out what happened. And ending with a knit stitch, good. Row four says, just like row two, slip one, curl across. I'll meet you over on the other side. We're purling every single stitch on the wrong sides except for the first one. All right. Now the pattern is going to tell you, again, all my heel flap is on the one needle. These guys, which I still have my stitch markers on to note them as needle one and two, they're just still holding stitches. Now the instructions are gonna say repeat rows three and four until you've worked a certain number of total rows and you're ending with a purl row. What is going to happen here those slip stitches mean you're going to have a stitch on the end here, one bigger one. I've done four rows and I have two stitches here. Again, I've done four rows and over here I have two stitches on the side. Those slip stitches provide elongated V's by each of my thumbs here on each side. So one way if you lose track, as she says in the pattern, is count those side Vs, the elongated, you'll have one for every two rows. And the number you have should be half the number of total rows. In my case, I know I'm done when I have 16 of them on each side, but everyone is gonna be making a different size. Follow those instructions. So repeating rows three and four, which really are the same as one and two, our right side rows, we're gonna slip and knit all the way across. And our wrong side rows, we're gonna slip the first stitch and purl the rest of them. So I'm gonna get those done and I will see you at the other end. And we'll take a look at what it looks like. And after that, we'll, we'll dive into the next video. I'll see how, if I can set these up eventually so they will play one after each other. I will do my best with that. This is only on the heel flap. So again, a row of, when you have color changing yarn like mine, the self patterning in this section over here, you can tell where there's a slip one knit one. My knits are purple and my slips are pink. And then on the way back, I'm only slipping this first stitch, which again will give me half the edge stitches for the total numbers of rows. And I'm gonna go back across here, purling. Total of 32 rows. So this is row six for me. I still have a few of these to go. So I'm gonna shut the camera off and get these rows in and we'll see what it looks like when I'm done. All right, I believe I'm halfway through my heel flap right now. So I have done 16 rows. I just wanted to point out to y'all. So again, notice needles one and two are just holding stitches back there. The only thing that's growing is what I put onto the third needle which is half the stitches of the sock. And the other thing, if we look, if I wasn't sure, I think I've done 16 rows, but if I wasn't sure, I'd look at the side here and I'd start counting Vs, not counting the one that's up on the needle. So one, two, here, let me see if I can do it with one of these needles because my fingers are big. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
This little guy down here, it's unclear if he's really a stitch or not. So this is number eight. So yes, I've done, you know, the number of slip stitches on the side will be half the number of total rows. I can check the other side too, since this, the yarn's not there, it might be easier to see. We'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Be really careful because it'll want to curl around on you. Spread it out to count your stitches there. If you have one extra row because it's where you started, that's okay. The other thing I want to point out, I mean, we can fix things with picked up stitches later. The other thing I want to point out is the slip one, knit one that you're doing on every right side row, it's going to make it look a little bit like ribbing and it has some give there. That's part of what can make a sock fit well and hold up a little more on the back of your heel. Because this looks like ribbing, but if we look in here, what would normally be a purl stitch if it was ribbing, they're all knit stitches. If I dig in here, that's a knit stitch too. It's just the slip stitches will pop up a little bit and give you that elasticity. The inside, take a look at that. Down here is where all of my regular straight purl stitches are. The slip one, knit one, alternating with a row of just purl. Again, gives me some double stranding here, or like some the slip stitches have those, those bigger strands there. It's got just a little more thickness and durability to it than straight knitting, which is all these little guys. And that's part of what makes a heel hold up in a traditional three-part heel. So again, as I, as I, We'll get going with my row 17. I'm going to slip one and knit one. And again, as you can see, again, trying to ignore those other needles, the one I slip is over the raised knit stitches, and the one I knit is down in the valley. So I'm slipping the peak and I'm knitting the valley. That can also keep me on track. Let me get that underneath me. That can also keep me on track once I have some of the flap here is slip the peak, knit the valley, slip the peak, the mountain, knit the valley, mountain, valley, mountain, valley. That keeps me on track with a traditional heel flap. Again, I'll see y'all, I'll keep knitting this and I'll see y'all after my total number of rows. So here I am at the end of row 32. And my cat's decided to say hi. He's probably annoyed by things right now. I was keeping track of my ring row counter, row 32. So here's my heel flap, a traditional heel flap. And again, as I mentioned halfway in between, the front side, because we're slipping one and knitting one on the front side and purling across the back, it'll look like ribbing. It'll have the give of ribbing, but it's all knit stitches if we look in there on this side, on the, on the right side or the front side. The back side, you can see those slip stitches. It has some give. It has some durability to it. And we can check. I did 32 rows total. Hi, maybe. That means I should have the slip stitches on the edge. I should have 16. One, let's, let's try this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 13, 14, 15, 16. Not going to count that little guy down there. So I've got that on either edge. The next part is going to make, we essentially have a rectangle here, something flat. We're gonna take this flat bottom and we're going to curve it to fit around the heel. The heel turn is next. That will be our next video. So thank you for joining us for part one of the heel flap videos. 
Kat has joined me right here and he's gonna make this challenging, but we have a flap. We have a flap, it's a rectangle. We have the rest, he just bit me right here <laughs> and ran away. Um, we have the rest of our circle for our sock is still on stitch holders down here, but we have the heel flap. This is the flap. And next we'll be doing the heel turn. We will be making this flat part cupped. It will look a little bit like this, rounded. Here's the flap on the done one. We're making the rounded part underneath. If you've enjoyed these videos, please consider subscribing. That is free of charge or writing a comment or giving us a thumbs up. If you'd like to become a member for a monthly fee, if you'd like to give us a super thanks, that's a possibility as well. Whatever you're comfortable, comfortable or able to do, we appreciate everybody who watches. Thank you so much and may your crafting be filled with joy and confidence. Bye-bye now.